Hi everyone! Today we're going to be doing a really quick and easy project. Um, there's been a lot of single hooping stuffies coming out lately and everybody's seeming to really love them so hopefully Kelly will have more coming out if they remain popular. So I'm going to do the lamb today and it's all done in one hoop. If you've never done an in the hoop project or an in the hoop stuffy, the single hoop stuffies are the easiest ones to start with and they're so quick and easy. So we're going to start with tear away in the hoop and I've spoken before about your fabric being as important as your actual design that's stitching. So I'm using, I believe it's called Cuddle Sherpa, and it is the devil. First time I used it, I said never again. I got it in a scrap bundle, and it is so stretchy. It stretches more one way than the other, but it just, oh, it was terrible to work with. But it looks so cute on llamas and lambs, so I discovered how to make it super easy to work with. So. I use a bit of fusible poly mesh on the back and just for the front piece and that controls the stretch so it just turns a difficult fabric into a super easy fabric to work with and I just leave the back the, with the none on it because you don't need to stitch on it as much you can add it if you want I also have a fleece that I'm using I'm trying to tell the color under my basement lights it's a peach color for the face and the ears and then I also have a print accent that I'm using flannel on and I just backed it with a little fusible stabilizer as well just to make sure that that flannel doesn't fray away because flannel can be a very loose weave um, it's, I've done it before without and never had an issue but I just like to be safe so I'm stitching the 6x10 today and it's going to be personalized so I can show you where I add that in as well and we're going to go ahead and add our main fabric which I have backed in my fusible poly mesh because it's a pain to work with the stretch and then I'm also going to use a piece of water soluble topper and this will just help the stitches stay on top of the pile of the Sherpa and make sure that we can see the stitches really well and we don't have fur peeking out in between our stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and step stitch step one directly onto my fabric and my stabilizer. Okay, we stitched step one directly onto our fabric to tack it onto the stabilizer and we're going to go ahead and stitch step two which is going to be our placement for our appliques for our ear and our face. So it's gone ahead and stitched the placements to show us where to put the fabric for the two ears as well as the face portion. You can use small scraps or I'm just going to use a large piece of minky or fleece sorry to cover everything and then I'm going to go ahead and tack that down. So I've gone ahead and stitched down the tack downs. It does it in three separate steps. So if you want to use scraps, you can use smaller pieces. I'm going to go ahead and cut the appliques as close as I can to my sat or to my tack down stitches before the satin stitch. The outer ear is along the outer perimeter of the design, so you don't need to trim this tight. And there's a little zigzag there that you can see to remind you that those can leave some seam allowances but you want this line right here as closely cut as possible. So I've gone ahead and trimmed these up 
um, left a little bit of a margin there for my seam allowances. If you forget, there is a zigzag there, so that should prevent any fraying if you're using a woven, so that helps there. So the next step is to go on and do the placement for the belly, which I'll go ahead and stitch now. So we've stitched that step, the placement, which is step, step seven, and we're gonna go ahead and add our accent fabric onto the belly and tack it down using step eight. So we have secured that fabric in place and I'm going to go ahead and cut that as closely as I can to my stitching. So I've gone ahead and trimmed all around that as close as I could and I'm going to go ahead with the next step which will be the satin stitch to cover all those raw edges there. So we've gone ahead and stitched the satin stitch onto the face and now we're going to cover up the ears as well as the top portion of the face and the other side of the ear which we're going to match our fleece color to so I have it clean loaded there and we'll stitch that satin stitch. Okay, so we've completed all of our satin stitching and we just have the face details left to do. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch step 11, which is an optional eyelash step. You can skip it if you prefer no eyelashes. Then step 12 is going to be the black of the eye. Step 13 is going to be the color around the eye. And step 14 is going to be the white sparkle. So I've gone ahead and stitched her cute little face. She has optional cheeks as well for step 15. So I'm going to go ahead and give her a little gutty blush there. So we've added her little blush. It's just a sketch fill, so it's nice and light. If you like something a little darker, you can go ahead and repeat that step and get a darker cheek look. Now, if you're going to personalize, our next step is our back, but we want to make sure that we get our name in. So I added mine in software. You can add yours on some machines, but I just like the control I have to see what it looks like finished and center it properly on my software. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch the name onto the belly. So we've got all the steps done and we just have to add our backing step. So I'm just going to take my plain back and add it right sides together. You can take your water soluble off at this stage if you want to, or you can leave it on and take it off after. And I'm just going to stitch around the final outline.
So I'm all done the backing. I accidentally used my back for my front. I always cut the back just a little bit bigger than the front so you have a little wiggle room for the final outline. And so I had to sort of keep it from curling around your needle. If it curls around your needle, you're gonna end up with a needle break. And that's a huge uh, annoyance and it's kind of scary, especially if you're new. Um, you can pin or tape, but I would suggest cutting your back bigger than I did. So I'm just gonna get her cut out. Okay, so we've got her all cut out and you don't wanna leave too much bulk, particularly around the small little bits that you wanna poke out because you're gonna to wanna to be able to really get them pushed out as far as possible. And if you have too much bulk, they're just gonna be short and stuffy. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do, especially around this thick curve here in the leg, around the ears is clip into those corners. So you want to snip into the stitching as close as you can get without actually cutting the stitching. And this is going to release the arm from that seam allowance and allow you to really push that arm out so you don't have a stubby short arm. We're gonna go ahead and turn that around. You can use a turning tool. My tool of choice is a dowel, and I find I can just push that into the little pieces and get them nice and pushed out. So I've got her all turned out. I just use the dowel inserted inside and just use that to push those smaller pieces out um, to my preference. Some people like hemostats as well. I left myself a tail on both sides where the opening is, so once I've got it stuffed, it just makes it a little easier to get a nice smooth line there. Here she is all finished up. We just stuffed her and closed her up, and she's so quick to make and so adorable with her personalization. If you have any questions, just leave us a comment. And if you have requests for our next video tutorial or any requests for new stuffy designs, feel free to let us know. Thanks. Bye.